recording now. So, so the first part is your project, and uh, your project was worth. Uh, worth 500 points. It was, uh, it was building a membrane. You did, you had most of the time in class. And all you had to do was uh, color it according to the directions and cut it out and fold it and then answer some questions. You had uh, explanations given in class you had uh, you missed a quiz go ahead and take a seat so e explanations given in class Where's your notebook? Yeah. You're 26 minutes late to class. You, you missed a quiz, and you don't know where your notebook is? Okay, I'll, t I'll talk to you later about that. So explanations given in class. You have explanations given in class. Uh, you had a video posted online on YouTube. to help you if you needed it. And of course you had the, the previous, the whole week of content to help. Then you came in today and you took a quiz and the quiz was worth 200 points and you had to draw a membrane, which is what you did and what I would expect to see is to see fo uh, at least a phospholipid bilayer. And it could be, it's, it doesn't have to be a perfect bilayer, it just has to be, uh, has to show that you understand. As long as you did this, I, I need you to be, I, I don't need to know what anyone did or didn't do. I just need to, I'm just telling you what the answers would be. I need to know that you understand that this is a hydrophilic head And preferably that you know there's phosphate involved. That would be very useful. I need to know that you understand that this is a hydrophobic tail. Preferably that it's a lipid or fatty acid. Those are two things that what really should be labeled. The next is a protein. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see as many proteins as you could remember of the four or five that we discussed. Um, I think the easiest for you might have been something that looked like this. If it looked anything like this when you labeled it a channel protein, If you label that, you just had like a little something coming in here. And the function is, uh, the function is uh, allowing specific things in. Molecules, right? But you, I, I need, and the word thing could be anything. It could be molecules or whatever you like. 
Then, of course, you'd have to have, that would get you most of the way there. If you did all that, you'd have, out of 200 points, you have 150 points out of 200. So if you have all those components, you have 150 points. For the rest of the, the other 50 points, you'd have to add all the other proteins involved and their function, or at least, so that's 50 points. So if you have a receptor protein that sits on, uh, you know, a tethered protein, a tethered protein that sits on the outside, attached to a specific amino, oh, I shouldn't, I drew, the, I drew that incorrectly. A tethered protein that sits on the outside and is attached to a specific lipid, you can call that tethered, functions only outside. Oh, of course, I'd expect you to label this outside and this inside. And so the tethered protein would give you 10 points there with the function, five points if you didn't have the function. And then you had an anchored protein Again, it can be drawn any which way you want. The shape is not what's important. What's important is that you show what you sh that you show that this tethered protein is embedded in the membrane, where this tethered uh, anchored protein is embedded in the membrane. Tethered proteins on the outside attached to a lipid. So this is anchored, and then. Again, functions outside. This is worth another 10 points. And the next is a receptor protein. The receptor protein has to be outside and it has to have a part that crosses the inside as well. I would really love it if you guys uh, were able to designate, you know, if you were color coded, uh, if I saw a drawing that was color coded, uh, color coded as well, that would be amazing. So if you had, oh, I didn't mean to do that. If you had, this is yellow and this is all yellow. Why do you keep fidgeting? If this is all yellow, and then you saw that this was yellow too here, and this is all yellow, and this is yellow here, and then you had, uh, this is all blue, oh. This is all blue, oh, that's not what I want. This is all blue out here. And of course, this is all blue, this is all blue, this is all blue, because this is all hydrophilic. That would be nice so that you understand that. This is basically a drawing that's right from your lab. This is what was expected in the lab, right? And then this was all hydrophilic, obviously. Because that's a lot, that's all continuous. So if you were able to do that, that would obviously give you some extra credit points with me. But I didn't ask you to color code it, so it wasn't really, it wasn't really a, a requirement to get the points, but it would sure help you a lot. Uh, so that, again, and if you didn't do well this time, well, you know what to expect. So this one is a receptor protein. And again, it receives a signal. from the outside and sends it in. 
And that would be another uh, 10 points. Uh, there is. So there's 10 points uh, for the channel protein. Oops, I, should, I put that downstairs, down there. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40. Then the last 10 points is what proteins left, if you, if you remember? Transport. Uh, transport proteins, correct. Now the transport protein is, is not a channel protein. Uh, we're gonna talk about today uh, a little bit about what kinds of proteins, uh, what is kinds of transport happen in a cell, how do you get things across this membrane? It's one of the biggest issues your cells have, but you do have this protein that does have to cross the membrane. It does have to have some kind of opening. So I, I believe what we did is we, we in the lab, oh, in the lab we, we drew this little line here. I shouldn't draw it blue, pink, it should be blue. Or yellow should be blue. And we call this a transport protein. I, I don't know what the, all the talking is about. What's going on? So that's that would be the answer, uh, and that would get you uh, two hundred points if you drew all that with all the with all the various proteins. Again, right out of your lab, I'm posting this. So you don't have to take pictures. Uh, as soon as the last quiz is done today, if you all cheat and give your give this quiz quiz off to the other classes, that's fine. They just are going to do really well, and you're not. That's all. So, I, again, I'm going to post this. I don't have time. We don't have time today to, to just focus on just this. This is all should all be review. That's why it's a quiz. If it's not review, then you have to question what's going on. I know you had homecoming on, on Saturday. I know you had to spend a lot of time preparing for that. So I get that. Uh, and if it's if this hurts your grade, you know I I'm so sorry about that. But that's say what, what's this? You didn't even go home. That sucks. Uh, but I just that's one of those. It's just one of those weekends, guys. You're just gonna have to take the hit. I mean, move on, do better next time. However, coming in 20 minutes late and not having your notebook and missing a quiz that really hurts. That's going to hurt because that's a zero on the quiz, a zero out of 200. You don't have this written down in your notes, and you don't have your lab. That's 500. She lost 700 points today, and you don't have your notebook. That just is – I'm just saying it just it, – it doesn't, it doesn't bode well for your grade when that happens. Does that make sense? Does everybody here make sense? I, so if you're gonna get it, if you're gonna lose points, go down swinging. Don't go down because you're not prepared. That's like getting a park a parking ticket. It's a silly, unless it's an emergency, it's a silly way to get a ticket. If you're gonna get a ticket, it might as well be breaking a traffic law, right? I mean, it's probably safer to just park wrong. But all right, a lot, but you'll like. So let's go on. We're going to go on now. Did you guys get how to grade that? Yeah. All right. Hey, excuse me. Faith, I, I've moved you twice. Do I have to move you again? All right. All right. Whatever's going on with this, convert, this talking and la giggling and stuff, it needs to stop. We need to go on and take notes. So we have a problem with the membrane, and, and we've solved it with proteins. But now we have to talk about some, something about, we have to connect some of the ideas that we've talked about already. We've talked about kinetic energy. 
And we've said, huh? That and The first and Thank you. Kinetic energy and kinetic energy is the energy of mo of motion. So, and remember, we said that all things are moving. All the time. Now, that's a really important idea. It's a really super important idea. There's nothing that's standing still. So when you look under the microscope, as soon as we start going over mitosis and meiosis and, and take a look under the microscope for organelles this, uh, on Thursday, that'll be your lab on Thursday, by the way, is looking at cells underneath the microscope identifying organelles and then trying to get your bearings. You're going to look at different tissues, but that'll be on Thursday. My point is kinetic energy. What you're going to see when you look under a, a live, a non-fixed slide, a slide that's not fixed. A lot of the slides you'll be looking at, a lot of the slides you'll be looking at are going to have uh, all the cells, all the tissues are going to be fixed in wax or, or in resin. They're not going to move. But some of the slides you're going to be looking at will be live. I'm going to bring some pond water in, and you'll be looking at living things that we you would find in pond water. So there's going to be some there's going to be some live movement. What you're going to see is that there's these little particles, and you, when you look on the microscope, you're going to see a lot of things. Not everything underneath in the microscope is alive. You might find some dead, rotting plant material, what have you. What you're going to see is that these particles, they're going to be vibrating. They're going to be moving because they're constantly moving. They're constantly moving. This, this particle might flow in this direction. That particle in this direction are constantly moving. And when they hit their boundaries, they bounce back. This is normal. This is happening in everything that you look at. It's happening in your skin. It's on that table. It's vibrating. Now, the interesting thing is that solids vibrate, have less room for vibration. They vibrate, but they can't move around as much. But things... that Yeah, that's exactly it. That's it. So it, it would be like you guys stand next to each other and doing this on a dance floor, you know, just basically... You know, I've seen people... I've been to clubs where it's so packed, you really don't have a lot of room to move. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't always an old man. But um, oh. when you say all things, do you mean like all living things or dead? All things. That table in front of you is not alive, but it's vibrating. Oh, so and, and even if these things are alive or not, they're going to move in the liquid because they have more. Because as they vibrate, they vibrate. You know how your washing machine can can vibrate itself to move across the you know across the floor. Yeah. And well, that happens in everything. So that's really important because that takes us to the, the one way that things move across a membrane. And in a few weeks, you'll do the lab, uh, a version of the lab that the AP kids are doing today. Not today, uh, this Friday. You guys might have to do a lab Wednesday and Friday because that lab might take too long. I, the more I try to fit it into 80, 80 minutes, I don't know how we can do it. I'm just waiting to the side conversations kind of chill out. All right. So you have a membrane and you have a certain number of particles on this side. And let's 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 say it's uh, let's say it's salt. Let's make salt red. Okay? So you have Na plus over here and there's a lot of them. And let's say we said that this membrane semi-permeable. Uh, we, you, they, I said they, they use the word semi-permeable. Really, it's selectively permeable, right? Yeah. Na plus <laughs> sodium ion selectively.
permeable. It means this membrane, that's the membrane. The membrane is going gonna, is gonna to allow some things through and other things not. Let's assume that there's a channel protein here. Permeable, as I said last week, means allowing through, and selective means it doesn't allow everything through. Okay. No, I was listening, but I was writing something down. Uh uh uh. I, I just I said it last week, but it's one of those things of vocabulary words and preparation. But we'll go ahead and say it again. Uh, permeable means allowing things to flow through, allow stuff through. So when something's permeable, it means it's a, it does allow something through. And selective means it's selecting what gets to go through and what doesn't. So there's a channel protein here. And as we've drawn channel proteins in the past, what you find is it has a channel and allows sodium ion through the membrane. And you probably have several of these. Wait, so there's not always only one channel protein? Yeah, there's, ne there's never, it, it, the, the membrane's constantly changing. Please write that in your notes and make sure that's an important concept you really have to get in your head. Membrane's constantly changing. It's not only fluid because it moves around, it's also dynamic. It, it changes it's how, what proteins are in the membrane and what proteins are not in the membrane. So it takes channels in, it puts channels in the membrane, takes channels out of the membrane. Your cell do, is doing this all the time. All cells do this all the time. And so what that allows the cell to do is adapt to different changing environments. So if these sodium ions are moving around in every direction randomly, they're going to move through these pores, these channels, correct? So if you started with a high concentration on this side, a high meaning a lot, four in this case, and low on this side, meaning, meaning none, because there's no sodium on that side. Then when you take this, over time, what's going to happen is that some, I mean, randomly, I hope you can understand that, that randomly, some of these are going to end up on the other side. So they're constantly flowing. Now, some of these sodium, so until you get to something called equilibrium. What do you think equilibrium means? It equals on both sides, that's right. So over time, as these, these atoms or molecules or whatever is moving through the membrane can move through the membrane, it goes from high to low without any extra energy. I don't like to say without any energy, but you'll see on tests on your end of course exam, Ms. Fudge, did you hear me? On your end of course exam and other exams, you'll see no energy required. What they mean is no extra energy. No chem no, no, the cell does not have to expend energy. It does it all, they move all on their own. Sodium ions move on their own in this case, in this example, from high to low through this membrane until you get equilibrium. But understand that even at equilibrium, they're still moving backwards. This sodium will go in this direction randomly because they're randomly moving, right? Yes? Yep. But what is also going to randomly happen if, one, if this one goes that way, what could also happen? Equal chance of happening. The other sides can move the same way. So we call this dynamic equilibrium. The, mole, the atoms and molecules don't, keep, don't stop from changing once they reach equilibrium. They keep changing, but they change in an equal amount. So for every one that goes up, one will come down. So no matter what, as one crosses in one direction, another will cross in the other direction, just randomly. Mm -hmm. 
So are, are we, do we understand that concept? Is that difficult to understand? Does anybody have any questions? Because now's the time to ask questions. I think we, we had a couple kids this morning come in and say, well, I didn't understand this, I understand that last week. And now the things do. And so I, I'd like some more time. The answer is I can't. You need to ask when you have this opportunity. Yeah. Can you say that again? Like the whole thing about starting All right. So, so when you're dealing with it's a membrane, if the substance can move through, right, because it's selectively permeable, the membrane chooses what it allows through and what it doesn't. The cell chooses what to allow through and what it doesn't. If it allows it through, then things will move from high to low without any extra energy because simply there's a lot on one side and there's not a lot on the other. And the one that, could you take your book bag off the table? Take that book bag. Say what? High, high to low, high to low. And things where there's a lot of a lot of a high concentration of particles, just because they're vibrating and moving, they move to an area where there's low uh, concentration. Can we take that book bag off the table, please? Yes, I I think I've said that numerous times. I'd like to see what you're all doing. I don't like to see book bags on the table. I think I've said that number numerous times. I don't think it's a lot to ask. So there's uh there. There's a lot, and just because there's a lot on one side, they vibrate, they pass through the membrane, and they go from high to low. Is that making sense to you? That, don't just say sure, and then come in on quiz day telling me you didn't understand and have all kinds of complaints. That's not satisfactory. Yes. So they move because they're vibrating? That's right. Just simply because they're vibrating, moving, they're bouncing around. Imagine, imagine you have, have you seen a bingo machine? Yeah. Imagine you have a, a bingo machine and you have one hole. The balls are bouncing around. Can you imagine that a ball will go through that hole eventually? Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Well, that's all that's happening. These particles are moving and jumping and, mo and, and moving in every direction. And eventually, they're going to go through the holes that are present in the membrane. Is that clear? Yeah. Why are we putting things away? What time is class over? So we have two minutes. So put the stuff... Hey, without sass, please. Because you can leave. If, you're going to have, if you feel sassy, step outside. Get your chair. Listen, I don't have... I, I, no. If you want to sass me, get your stuff together, go outside in the hallway, and just relax and breathe. And come back when you're ready to participate in class. And tomorrow, starting tomorrow, you're not sitting there. We're going to sit you somewhere else. But I'm, I'm telling you what's going to happen. I'm not, I'm not, that's it. So stop putting things away. I still got a minute. I'm going to finish my sentence. So, excuse me. So when we're talking about things moving from high to low, from high concentration to low concentration, things move without extra energy. Now, there's a lot of things that are going to change that we have to add to this. It's not this simple. And we'll talk about this next week and on Friday, because, on Thursday, because tomorrow and the next day you have, we have a visitor coming in that's going to talk to you about uh, a little bit about ecology is an expert in the food supply and the food chain uh, in our food supply and I think it's a very interesting series of activities and lecture he has for you so wrap up your materials make sure your area is clean and have a good day when we're talking about a cell it doesn't just stop there that's the idea of dynamic equilibrium that you have movement in both directions, with the membrane in the center separating the outside from the inside. Remembering that, or you have to always remember that when you're talking about a cell, you're always talking about outside versus inside. Outside versus inside. Hey, you guys did this both uh, in AP and in honors biology. 
Do you think it would be helpful to talk about water potential and the equation in this at this level? I never, ha I have never done it, but I mean, I've never had a chance to ask an AP kid in the same class as an honors biology kid. You think it should? Okay, it's not. You don't think it's too complicated? All right, all right. So you don't think it's all right. So outside versus inside. All right, so things are moving across this membrane from outside to inside. In this case, it went, the sodium ions went from outside and they crossed to inside through these channel proteins. And then later they went back and forth. First of all, they, they have to go back and forth, but there's nothing on this side to go in that direction. So in the, initially everything was moving in, into the cell, but when it reached dynamic equilibrium, they moved in both directions equally. So there's no net change. Do you understand this word net? Have you seen this word before? I'm not talking about something to catch someone. Net force, yes, like a net force in physics. So when you go and get a job, anybody here work? Do you make money at your job? And when you get your check, they tell you, you got, do you get all the money that you're supposed to get? You get all your... So if you got paid a hundred, you're supposed to get paid two hundred dollars a week. Do you actually get two hundred dollars at the end of the week? What you get? What, what something? A bunch of stuff gets taken out, taxes or whatever. We call the the big number that two hundred dollars. We call it gross. The stuff you actually get, we call it net. And so net is net is the amount left over after everything has been added and subtracted. We call that net. So after you've, you've subtracted and added everything, you've added all the amount you're supposed to get, all the bonuses, you subtracted all the taxes, all the penalties, all the whatever. Net is what's left over. So if I have a membrane where I have twenty units moving in one direction and 10 units moving in the other direction, what's the net movement? This is outside, this is inside. Then the, then the net movement is 10 units into the cell. Do you all agree on that? So you have to understand what this means. This is a very big idea, and if you don't get this, when we go a little further now into, into diffusion and osmosis, and we start doing some calculations later next week, you will be lost. So you have to understand this idea of net. Does anybody have questions about this? If I have 20 going in and 10 leaving, my net is 10, correct? These are basically the kind of problems you're going to get, except you're going to some rules you're going to have to follow. And if you don't know the rules, again, you're not going to know. So they give you a membrane. They tell you there's 20 outside, 10 inside. What's the net movement? 10 where? Into or out of the cell? In, out. Draw, and they'll actually ask you to draw an arrow in the direction of the net movement. Where's the direction of the net movement? In, it's in, and you can, do, sometimes they'll tell you draw a small, draw the arrow, different arrows, size, different sizes of arrows. So a small arrow moving in this direction, a big one moving in, net in. In, out. Here's uh, 100, here's 200. What, what's the net movement? Yeah, 100 in. 100 in. 
It all depends on the graph, on the table they show you. They could draw a cell. They could do a cell. And they could put 10 inside, 20 outside. In or out? In. Not, uh, not hard, right? Can I tell you this is not hard? You agree it's not hard, but I'm going to tell you right now, based on pre previous, those people that don't write this down, that don't practice it, can I just tell you very clearly, as easy as this is, I still get about a third of the kids getting them wrong on tests when they don't put the effort in. Because it's going to get confusing in a little bit if you're not paying attention. It's not just this. It's just the beginning. You have to understand this if you're going to understand the more complicated stuff. Yeah. No. Sometimes the number is larger inside. If I drew the same cell or a similar cell and I put 20 inside and 10 outside, what direction is the movement? Outside. It's going out. And there are consequences to that. And what's the consequence to that? Here's the question I have to ask you. Is this cell going to get bigger or smaller? Bigger. It's going to get bigger. Why is it? But we'll talk about that in a minute. So it would get bigger. Is this cell getting smaller or bigger? This one's staying the same. This one got bigger and this one's staying the same, you're saying? No. So the bottom is outside. This one gets smaller, right? Huh? No, no, no. In all of these, outside is still out here and in is in here. So the arrows are telling you that movement's going to go from high to low. Movement's always going to go from high to low. So the net movement in this cell is into the cell. The net movement in this cell is out of the cell. And it would get smaller if it were water. And we'll talk about the difference between those two in a minute. Now we have to talk about the complicated stuff, the stuff where that, this for some reason people seem to get. But the next step is where kids just, I don't know, you don't pay attention. That's the only thing I could say. And it's not all of you. Most of you will get this right every time. Most of you see an osmosis diffusion problem, get very cocky, be very happy about it, and you'll get, and you should. If you understand the basic concepts, it's an easy point, easy part of, the, of biology. This is an incredibly easy part of biology. I have to say it should be really physics because uh, diffusion osmosis is something that happens in physics and chemistry. It happens everywhere. It's in nature. All right, so that is the idea of net movement. Now the question is, what are the rules of movement? Why? Oh, this guy with his mess. The question is, what are the rules of things moving across a membrane? Well, here are the rules. A membrane is made of a hydrophilic side, two hydrophilic sides, and a hydrophobic side. We all should, a uh, hydrophobic middle. That's something we all should understand at this point. If you don't, well, that's work you have to do. And you have water outside and you have water inside. So the real question here that we have to ask is, what does this membrane normally allow in and what it does it not allow in? What are the rules of permeability? Remembering that permeability means allowing things through the membrane. What are the rules for allowing things through the membrane? These rules are pretty straightforward. If they're charged, charged, it's hard for them to get through. They need help. And what, where's the help going to come from? What's going to help things cross the membrane? I'll wait because you know the answer to this. Proteins, correct. So things like sodium ion, chloride ion, uh, calcium ion, uh, potassium ion, 
All these, uh, all these things that you need to take, iron, these are also known as vitamins, right, and minerals. These are things you take in pills, and a lot of you t your doctors tell you you need to eat. You have to; get, they need help crossing the membrane because the cell, the membrane, these are charged, and this hydrophobic layer will not allow them to pass through easily at all. Even small ones like these atomic ions. Polar molecules that are small can get through. But they still need, they likely will need help, but they can get through. Polar that are large need help. Again, you need, a, you need some kind of protein. So we need to be clear on those rules. There can't be any confusion about this. Nonpolar... No help at all. No help needed. They get through no problem. They don't need any protein helping them. The gases, a nonpolar gases especially. Nonpolar is small. And those are generally gases. Things like oxygen gas, CO2 gas. They get through the membrane without any problem. So no help needed there. Polar, uh, what polar small we already did. Nonpolar big. Uh, they need help. So there you're talking about really big uh, nonpolar molecules still need help. So really the only things that absolutely need no help are going to be gases and very small nonpolar molecules. Are we clear? How do you tell if something's a nonpolar molecule? They have to, somebody has to tell you that. So they have to tell you the problem. Is that clear? If this were an AP class or if this were a chemistry course or if this were a, a college class, then they would expect that you know. I'm going to tell you there's a couple that you should know automatically. Uh, you, you should know that glucose is big and polar by this point. So you got to know it needs help. And you got to know that water is polar and small. So you know it's going to get through, but it still probably needs a little help. So that should be in your head. Is that clear? Because that you should know because we've covered it for so much over the last couple months. Everything else, they have to tell you. And in fact, in most cases, they're going to tell you if the solute is permeable or not. And so here, here's another connection. We talked previously about kinetic energy. We've also talked previously about solute solvent solution. Well, now you're going to have to use those, those terms. Do we all have these rules straight? You have them written down? You have to memorize them. You have to know them. All right, so I'm going to move on. I agree. The next question is concentration. And we've talked about concentration. We've, we've talked about it, the idea of moles per liter. And we've said, we've said that moles is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd units. It could be atoms or molecules, particles. Let's call them particles. It's a really big number. So concentration is generally un uh, moles per unit. And that tells you how much of, a su of something there is in a, a, a beaker or any kind of solution. So you have a solution and the solution has a solvent. And in biology, almost all our solvents are water. I got to tell you, not always in a biology lab is the solvent water. But in living systems, the solvent's water. Bless you. 
The solute can be a lot of stuff. Solute's anything that you're dissolving in the, solu- in the solvent. So it could be a lot of stuff. But the solvent is in, bio- in, bio- in biological systems is water. All right, so that being said, we're always going to assume that the solvent's water. Let's go ahead and then talk about the concentration in different cells. So I should be, at this point, with the knowledge you have, I should be able to draw a cell and tell you the membrane I have to tell you this part, or somehow I have to let you know something's going to let you know, is permeable to sodium ion. I'm telling you it's permeable. I have to tell you, in the problem that the state of Ohio gives you, in the problem that an ACT test might give you, in the problem an AP test will give you, and a problem that I give you, no matter what happens, they have to tell you something about whether the membrane's permeable or not. Or not. The, the higher level the class, the more, the sneakier the way they tell you, but they have to tell you. So if I do this, I should, I should maybe do this first. So if I do this, I could ask you, in what direction will the solute move? Why inside? Say it loudly. Why do you say inside? Why do you say outside? I thought there was more on the outside. There is more on the outside, but how do things move? High to low. So how are things moving here? Say what? Say again, I can't hear you. It's going to go inside because? Because there's more outside than inside and you need to reach equilibrium. So it's going to go inside until both sides have about equal, and that at that point, they're going to move in both directions. It's moving in both directions all the time, but it's moving more inside at first until it's equal, until they reach equilibrium. Is that, is that clear? All right, so let me do it again. In what direction is the ion moving in this cell. And say what? And both, they're always both moving in both directions, but they're both moving in both directions at the same rate. This is at equilibrium. Do you, do you agree? Does everybody see that? Someone not see that. If you don't see it, now's the time to say, hey, I don't see it. There is two, there are two outside and there are two inside. Which side is bigger? Things move from high to low. So which side is bigger? No. There's two outside and there's two inside. They're equal. Things are always moving. I told you the membrane's permeable, so there has to be holes in it that fit the sodium ion, right? Because sodium's charged. What do the rules say? It should not get through the membrane without help. So that means there's a protein in the membrane that lets, you, that lets sodium in and out. There are channels in this membrane. Do you see how many different things are implied by these rules? So that means that this is at equilibrium. So this has the same channels, but on the net movements in, even though you're right, there is some leaving out, but it's much smaller going out than in. The net movement's in because there's more outside. Is that clear? Yes? Okay. Because that's, you will have to be able to do that. Now, 
I can do this too. So now, which in which direction is it, is it is the net movement? Do it by drawing arrows. There's more where? There's more inside, so it's going to move towards the outside. That's correct. You see, it's not hard, is it? It really isn't. There is some moving in. There is some moving in. But it's mostly outside. The most of the movement, the net movement is outside. Now, that's great when you can count and it's easy to see. But sometimes they'll do percentages. Sometimes they'll say, hey, it's 10% sodium ion inside and it's 20% sodium ion outside. What's the direction of the movement? It's going towards the inside. Why? Because there's, that's right, there's a bigger percent on the outside, so it's going in. Sun's moving out, but a much smaller than what's going in. And that's it. And they could, of course, do the opposite and do 20% inside and 10% outside. And then now what? That's right. It's going to move mostly outside. Because, but that's only because what? The membrane has what? The mem it's, this is a charged particle. Caution. Caution. This is a charged particle. That's only because of what? Proteins. Because these membranes have the proteins that allow that to happen. Are we all good with this? I think I got four more minutes. So let me go ahead and... One more minute. Ooh. With, with emphasis on that. So that's, that is percentages. Don't put things away. I got one more minute. You heard her. You heard the lady. That's the time you need to wash those dishes and then the time you need to pay attention. Do not put anything away until the class is done. So the question that we have to answer that's going to be coming up on, on Thursday and next week is what happens what happens when the solute gets no help it or in other words can't get through That's the question, and that is, by the way, this answer to this question is why you swell up. That's why you swell up when you get hurt. That's why you swell up when you ladies have your periods and your tissues swell up. That's what, that's what happens. This is why. Why you get high blood pressure when you eat salt. Wait, doesn't it get clogged up? It's not clogged up. I can't see it. See it? It vibrates. Yeah, if they're in equal, if they if they can't, but then the question is, what happens if it do, if it can't get through? Like it would vibrate and it would hit the membrane, but the, if the membrane doesn't let it through, it's just going to bounce back. So it has to have a hole. It has to have a protein to let it get through if it's charged. They're on school, G. Uh, come and see me during lunch or after school. Uh, every, all those of you who are absent, see me after school or at lunch. Can I either show you a picture or my mother bring my project? I left it at home. You can show me a picture, but at lunch, if you don't mind. Okay? Uh, wait, let me see it now. Send it to me now. Message it to me. So I don't have anybody saying that, they, that you got an opportunity they didn't get. Goodbye.
you all were in such a hurry for me to end class, then you just stand there. Well, don't be rude. Just say, excuse me. Or let them in, either way. Whatever works. I like that sweatshirt. I didn't know they had one. Like that. <laughs> Wait, did they give you that because you wore had some inappropriate dress, or did you? Is that yours? Oh, okay. Because sometimes they put, they give those out. I'm like, I'm, I'll, if they're gonna give me a shirt like that, I'll I'll wear some inappropriate stuff. I'll come in with some glittery tank top. Mr. Mendoza. Mr. Mendoza. You think they give me a sweatshirt then? Mr. Mendoza, I did this, but I didn't have enough tape to uh, take. You got a zero. All right. Hey, I've been, I've had it today, man. I've had it today, so just be ready. If you have your answers and your model done, come up and put it here. Otherwise, you got a zero. You have a quiz today. So let's get it done. It's not going to say missing. It's going to say zero. Okay, so I'll show you when I did my If you don't have it now, I don't want I forget it. Keep it. But you know it's dead though, because I had some. I had a lot of people did them. You know what they did? They left them all over the building. I saw them. I seen them. I there's a drawer full of them. If you did them, give them to me and I'll grade them. If you didn't do them, it's okay. It's just five hundred points. 